Hi, how's it? We're in the next part here and I'm busy talking about what in the world is is going on. Like literally just the basic human sacrifice is what's happening. And I've been telling you guys about the bane of my existence that is this country that I am living in and the people groups that I have been unfortunately made to uh, vomit my pearls to and give what is sacred to and unfortunately they have reacted by indeed trampling me underfoot and then turning around and tearing me to pieces and how I imagine them as reprobate and written off entirely they have tasted the things of God to come and they have rejected them do you understand I have been a born-again believer in this nation for 11 years and I have got a very strong prophetic gift in I have also got a very strong like oratory uh sort of kind of preaching anointing ability to just kind of put things in a nice little sentence together and i have tried since i'm trying to obey god to use the gifts he's, gi he's given me the spiritual gifts he's given me to bring a people for himself to gather for him the indeed a uh, generation of souls that will be his for all of eternity I essentially play my part in the harvest that is plentiful where there are few laborers i've literally been working ever since I got saved. My first year of redemption, I was busy telling people about Jesus wherever it is that I could uh, tell them. My second year of redemption, from there, that's when I even started to try and tell the international community what I have seen in Christ, uh, in the sense that I started writing. I started to in, like communicate from a platform that more than just my immediate environment can um, hear the word of God from my particular mouth as it is spoken. And the uh, sorrow of my soul is that my countrymen, people that I gave links to my blog, people that I shared my content with who were also able to Google my name and surname and find um, my, my WordPress account, they grew such heavy horns and fangs and all different kinds of ugly, demonic, diabolical nails, claws, essentially. They grew such jealous fuzz like mold on their skin at the gospel that i was preaching that they saw it fit to abuse the living daylights out of me because of my uh, wordpress account because of my written blog do you understand what i'm saying I, I got persecuted by my country for writing in my blog that was the soft persecution that started out at the beginning of my walk as a disciple of the lord jesus christ i am in south africa a country that preaches the gospel and that apparently does not <coughs> persecute christians uh, yet, despite that, when I just became a Christian and did what Christians do, I got so abused by colleagues, by friends, by family members, by anyone at all that could poke at me, they poked at me. And so it just became rough. I lost my job in 2014, three years into my faith because of persecution, following losing my job because I had no money, no ability to take care of myself, no ability to be independent. They then were like, we are going to lord it over you with an iron fist and make sure that you can't preach the stupid gospel that you keep on preaching on the roof tops so i was forced into silence to from writing in my blog and from also uploading on my youtube channel then that's what i'm saying uh but then a couple of uh months ago maybe a year from today i decided that i'm gonna be bold and i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna try and speak again and i am now persecuted on like a freaking technological or like platform level where it is that now the countrymen that hate the word that I have to say I am being forced by platforms of an international nature to stay with them I am being coerced to sticking with Corazan, Bethsaida and Nazareth and that is of course a travesty and an abomination before Emmanuel who says get out of Nazareth you can't perform too many miracles there because a prophet has no honor in his own hometown who has told me, dust your feet off from Chorazan and Bethsaida. They don't want to hear the gospel. And I've been trying to honor him and so give the gospel to anybody else that is outside of these regions that might indeed be healed. And you, like social media platforms then said, no, sorry, you're not going to do that. Initially, when I got really serious with my YouTube channel uh, to grow it, I started to like even learn from non-Christian YouTubers as to how to grow a YouTube channel. When I started to employ all of their tips and hints and advice as to how to to make a YouTube channel grow. I grew. There was a month where I gained 300 subscribers and I was shocked out of my mind because of the amount of work that I was doing that I was putting in. The just yeah indeed just the volume of work that I put in to try and get those subscribers that I might indeed reach those numbers. 
of people that are outside of Nazareth, outside of Corazon and Bethsaida, as I was indeed dusting my feet off, YouTube made a decision across all of my, in fact, on one channel that I had, YouTube was like, we're going to shadow ban this. So I went and I started another channel and it was okay for a season and they shadow banned it. In the other channel, I grew to about 400 subscribers in about two months and it just went dead still. It's been a couple of months now that it's been sitting in the 400s and the bigger channel, I got to about 600 and then it went dead still. And it's been also about a couple of months that it's been there. I started a third channel that ch channel i grew to 100 and it's now stuck on 100 subscribers dead still going nowhere i started a fourth channel and the fourth channel went absolutely nowhere from the get-go i was sitting on zero subscribers and zero views so there they were like okay since she keeps on starting new channels what we're gonna do is shadow ban her on ip address so it's not that the world out there, which is why I don't necessarily believe that it's over for all of us and nobody wants to hear the gospel. The problem here is not the world. How can I describe these social media platforms or YouTube at the present moment? They're like the Iranian government. You cannot write off all Iranians as irresponsible and uh, oppressive systematically and uh, misogynistic. You can't write every man off there as misogynistic and overbearing over the f the rights of women on the ground. You cannot, get, like, uh, what is this, accuse uh, Iranian citizens on the ground for the indiscretions of their government. It is anti-government protests, uh, it is, the, sorry, the anti-government protests that are going on right now are precisely because the citizens on the ground want leg room. They want to move. And the men there have sort of kind of, I guess, caught up with the times. They realize the importance of women being able to study, to, I guess, show their smiles if they want to without having to wear that, like, you know, what do they call it, a hijab or whatever. The people of Iran are not the problem. The issue is the government of Iran. Similarly too with Afghanistan and the Taliban who are taking women out of universities, really just loading it over them with an iron fist, keeping people in poverty, rule that is iron fist, a very, very like um, uh, oppressive harsh and just like a crushing authority is what's going on in Afghanistan and the people on the ground are languishing they're moaning they're groaning and the women there are being stood for by the men of Afghanistan that are not still holding fast to these very oppressive what they call Sharia laws do you understand what I'm saying the people of Afghanistan are not the problem I, and neither are the people of Iran the problem the issue are megalomaniacs that are running the show and there's only five of them and they are a crushing authority on the people on the ground. YouTube has become to the community of consumers of content out there. TikTok, whatever might be the social media platform that has decided to censor the living daylights out of everybody. They've become like the Iranian government. They have become like the Afghani government or the Taliban. They have become like an oppressive regime that is smothering people from hearing what they need to hear, that is preventing people from doing what they need to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's hella uncomfortable. The, the, the censorship um, phase or trend that is going on across the world right now has cost even people that you thought could never be moved to be moved because they realize that the agenda on the ground is ludicrous. Let's move on to the next part.